some point he's going to have to press the green button and launch a bit of a crazy attack. There it is, it's over! Grumier does it. got the bronze. The sport of fencing requires a wide variety of movements, from the speed of a lunge to the acceleration in a flesh. The physics of this sport vary constantly. Today we'll be focusing on five of these. Balanced forces, acceleration, speed, transfer of momentum, total displacement, and momentum. When a fencer advances or retreats, they accelerate. They change both speed and direction as they move. When a fencer wants to attack, they accelerate forward to hit the target. The speed of a fencer changes when they advance and retreat. They can change the speed of their arms, legs, blade, body, and hand. When a fencer lunges, their blade, hand, arm, legs, and body all change speed. When fencer 1 lunges, he's covering a distance of about 1 meter in about 0.5 seconds. Therefore, he's moving at 2 meters per second. As he lunges, he also accelerates from a standstill to the lunge position. Because we don't know the force output from the lunge, we cannot calculate the acceleration of the fencer. Each fencer starts at a fixed position in the strip. When the fencer advances or retreats, it can change its displacement by very little. The fencer can fight an entire bat without displacing more than a meter, but it can also find that it has displaced itself the entire length of the strip. The transfer of momentum occurs when a fencer beats the other blade. A beat is when the blade of one of the fencers collides at top speeds with the second blade in order to knock it away. The beat illustrates the transfer of momentum because as soon as the two blades collide, all the momentum of the first one goes into the second one. Also, because of Newton's third law, when a fencer beats the other blade, there will be an equal and opposite reaction on the first blade, causing it to move in the opposite direction. The fencer can try to stop the beat from being knocked away because of inertia the blade will still want to move to the side. It is only when the fencer decelerates the blade that you can come back to defend, but by then it's too late, the fencer has already lost the point. Balanced forces in fencing can be displayed as two blades pressing up against each other, but neither blade is moving. If one fencer stops pressing, the other blade will push their blade to the side, and the force will become unbalanced. A series of balanced forces occurs when the fencer resists the parry. Both blades press against each other, but no real gain happens, where the net force is at zero. Unbalanced forces can come in any of the parries, though it is most prevalent in the sixth position parry. One blade exerts all the force while the second exerts none. The blade is pushed by the other blade to wherever the fencer wants until opposite force is applied. Lastly, a fencer's momentum is key in a move called the flesh. As the fencer moves forward, he is accelerating until he gains enough momentum that his blade will not be blocked by the other fencer. Similar to the lunge, the flesh also occurs from a standstill, but usually over a much longer distance. Using the momentum formula, momentum equals mass times velocity, we can determine the momentum of this fencer. First, we must find his velocity. If he travels 3 meters in 0 0.6 seconds, we can divide 3 by the number of seconds, 5 meters per second. Now that the velocity is done, we can now focus on the mass. Spencer weighs 125 pounds or about 57 kilograms. We just plug and chug 5 times 57 and now we have our momentum of 285 kilograms times meters per second. We hope you enjoyed our journey into the physics of fencing.